You were involved in the early 80s in uh, quite a bit of controversy with the band Judas Priest. And the claim, I think, was that they had backwards messages in their rock music that led to some unfortunate outcomes. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Two young men, two days before Christmas, uh, were sitting uh, in their basement of one of their houses, uh, drinking beer, smoking marijuana, and listening to Judas Priest. And the um, all afternoon. And then at the end of the afternoon, they uh, picked up a shotgun, walked to a local church playground that had swings and theater daughters and that kind of thing, uh, proceeded to sit down on the swings or a bench, I'm not, I can't remember the details now, and attempted to commit suicide. One of them succeeded, the other just blew his face off, but managed to survive. In the hospital, immediately after, when the police asked him, why did you do this? Uh, the response of the survivor was, life sucks, which is a, not an uncommon response among uh, teenagers, as they were. But the parents then, uh, a few years later, actually decided to sue. But they didn't decide to sue the gun manufacturer. They didn't decide to sue the, the uh, brewery that provided the beer or the, the uh, place that sold it. They didn't decide to go after the drug um, dealers who had sold them the marijuana. No, they decided to go after Judas Priest and CBS Records. I received a phone call from the head lawyer for Judas Priest and CBS Records. It was actually a whole firm of lawyers uh, in Reno, California, which is where the trial was going to take place. It's about a year before the trial. I received this phone call um, because of the work I'd done on backward messages and rock music with Don Reed, a colleague of mine then at the University of Lethbridge, that we'd done in response to this pastor from California coming to town and holding these big rallies about uh, backward messages and rock music uh, that were leading young people um, down the path of licentious sex and drug use. And he claimed it was because of the backward messages in the rock music. It led to a big um, rally at the end of his two days there where people showed up and broke records and things like this. Um, it was quite the cuss library in, in uh, Lethbridge. I was a brand new professor in 1982. I just arrived in Lethbridge. Um, and so I got a phone call back then um, from a local announcer of a rock station in Lethbridge calling me up after Pastor Gary Greenwald had arrived saying, is there anything in psychology that we could use to speak about this alleged uh, backward messages in rock music or subliminal messages they were calling them? And I turned to my colleague Don Reed and we both went, not that we're aware of. And we did a little research, but we couldn't find anything on backward messages. So I went to one of his, actually one more, one more than one of his rallies, to find out what he was doing. And on the basis of what he was doing, it seemed to be pretty clear um, that there really wasn't the effect that he thought it was going on, um, but rather just some standard psychological phenomena that, that we were well aware of, old, old phenomena in psychology. So it was on that basis then <clears throat> that Don Reed and I said, but to be fair, we should run some research. Right? But this is a claim nobody's investigated. Uh, he's, he was earnest. It wasn't like he was just a con man or something. He was actually earnest. As far as I know, he still is. He actually believes this, this is true. And so we decided, well, fair, fair enough. Right? His claim, and it, it's more subtle than most people think. So when it really hit the press in the, in the mid-'80s, um, uh, people had the wrong idea of what, in fact, he was claiming. So his concern is not that there, that... Um, uh, messages are being asserted in rock music because obviously the forward messages in many rock songs, right, are, are promote drug My use, dark, and, yes. right, yep, yep. and the like. So that wasn't his concern. His concern was that, as he rephrased it at one of his meetings, I'm paraphrasing now, um, is that well, good Christian teenagers with a forward message would hear it, understand it, and reject it. And, uh, yeah. But his concern was this: it's much more subtle. And to be fair, I thought well, the guy deserves a shake because he's not just thinking very glibly about this stuff. His concern was that because it was backwards, and it's hard to register consciously, if the message was still getting through, the meaning of the backward version of the message was getting through, then they would be unaware of the source. They wouldn't be able to attribute it to the record. Yeah. But if the thought popped into their head by some unconscious mechanism, yep. he never specified what that would be, but if it did, then they would have a message in their head with no attributable source except themselves. Yep. And so they couldn't protect themselves against it. Exactly. So they would now be looking at, uh, thinking, oh, uh, uh, it's fun to smoke marijuana. Must be my idea. So what he would do is he would then come in. He'd say, okay, this is, this is for example, um, 
Queen, Another One Bites the Dust, and you play a passage of Queen's Another One Bites the Dust in the forward direction. Another one bites the dust. Another one bites the dust. And another one gone, and another one gone. Another one bites the dust. Hey. And it sounds perfectly fine to you. Uh, famous song. And then he said, you know, here's the same section I'm going to play backwards, and I want you to listen for, and in this particular example, it's, it's fun to smoke marijuana. And sure enough, everybody starts laughing, because everybody hears it. We use it as a classroom demonstration now. Uh, and it's quite apparent. You know, it's quite apparent. Yes, it sounds like that, sort of, but it's like visual illusions. You're also aware at the same time that it isn't really like that, yes. right? So it's, it's got those two levels going on at the same time. But it, you could go, yeah, okay, I see what you mean, right? It does sound like it's fun to smoke marijuana. And he's many other examples like that. But that's his procedure. And he just comes in for about an hour, says, here's another passage I want you to listen for, then plays it. And by the time he's done, after about an hour, people are totally convinced all these backward messages, I heard them all when he asked me to, to hear them. So we thought, okay, he's got a theory. He's got, a, he's got an explanation of why he's concerned, that if, if it did manage to get in without you being aware of, its, of the source, that, that in fact could be of some concern. Um, so we thought, and there's no research, so why don't we actually see if you can influence people's behavior consistent with the meaning of the backward passage. Okay, cool. But they're not hearing the backward passage. That's the point, they're gonna hear it in the forward direction.